How cool is she? Six. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> Why not ten? <laughs> Welcome to Pass the Power with me, Paige Parker. I'm an author, advocate, tiger mom, and even claim a Guinness World Record for traveling the world to 116 countries with my husband, Jim Rogers. We up and left New York City 15 years ago to move to Singapore. Why? Because we believe Asia is the future and we wanted to immerse our daughters in Asia as well as for them to be fluent in Mandarin. Tamin Shaw, Hin Hao, Mama Shaw, Bu Hao. This podcast began during the pandemic because I wanted to offer conversations of hope. And as it evolves, I hope I do too. I'll dig deeper personally and give you more from guests as I continue to tap into my connections, sharing the most compelling stories to help you attain your goals personally and professionally. As a lifelong learner myself, there's little more I enjoy than exploring topics with our fascinating guests and sharing it all with you. So together, we may pass the power. How would you describe your mom? Passionate. Oh my God! We're in sync. Wow. We're in sync, Mama. We're in sync. I was like, she's never gonna get this. <laughs> so last year for your birthday, I wrote in your birthday card this acronym, like that was that spelled out page, like words that described you that where the beginning letter spelled out page. And I remember for P, I wrote passionate. Aww. And then I went through those five words and I was like, I think passion is the best. And so I used passionate. <laughs> is she a tiger mom? No. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You like to say you're a tamed tiger mom after surviving the local system with two daughters. I think she's too fun to be a tiger mom. Oh. <laughs> what animal is she? Fox. Zebra. What? <laughs> <laughs> Why a zebra? Because that's why I love it. It's the most beautiful animal. When I was on safari and I saw the zebra, I fell in love. I love the zebra. It's graceful. It's kind of eclectic. No zebra has the same stripes. They're all unique. Okay, that's why like a fox. Okay, a <laughs> fox is like specifically a snow fox. Like they're really, really pretty, and they're also really, really smart. And like obviously they're cunning, but I was focusing more on the smart factor. You see, I was given three seconds. Yeah, so. I am cunning too, though. Yeah, sure. Well, if you want to admit it. <laughs> How strict is she? Five. Five. <laughs> I think it depends. I, I'm very strict on some things, and I'm very kind of chill on others. I think you were a lot more strict when you were younger and now we're kind of trusted to be independent so we're given a lot more freedom. Naturally the strictness scale has decreased. Like primary school me would probably say seven or eight. <laughs> How cool is she? Six. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> Why not ten? No okay so as I said eight it occurred to me that you probably wanted me to say ten. <laughs> I think you're really cool because given your social media presence, you, you keep up with the times, you know about the trends, you do TikTok dances. Not many other 54 year olds do TikTok dances and such. And so you're quite cool. But I was thinking about how one could define cool in different ways. And so obviously there's that like normalized, like, oh, cool, like, is she hip? But also like, cool, like like calm and collected. And I think you're a little bit less calm and cool than the other cool. And so I deducted two. Mm, I'm pretty intense. Yes. Of course I want to be cool, but I don't think I'm that cool. I think you're pretty cool. Like, Aww. especially comparatively. Like you always say, my mom always says like, oh, what other 54 year old can insert action? <laughs> and it's like, oh, what other 54 year old can do a split? And I'm like, whoa. Why would you say I can do a split? We're okay. flex, but okay. Yeah, flex, <laughs> flex. <laughs> What is something you wish she would stop doing? Describing food is nice. <laughs> Making me take pictures for her Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> so my mom's one. Like two weeks ago, we were out at a restaurant. The entire time she'd been using the same two adjectives to describe her food. Nice and yummy. It bothered me so much. And I was like, neither of those words are actually describing what the food tastes like. Like, can you use a more descriptive adjective? And then my mom was like, but it is yummy. <laughs> and then, so I think she knows it. Like, that's a pet peeve of mine. What is something you wish she would start doing? Helping Hugging me more. Oh, helping me study for exams together more often. Uh, last year, was it? Like right before my geography end of year exam, for some reason I was like, hey, do you want to help me study? <laughs> and she was like, sure. And so I, um, I wrote out questions for her to ask me based on the content I needed to know. And then she asked me them and then like I wrote, I had written out model answers. She was kind of like a human flashcard. Um, I had written out model answers uh, and then she just, you know, checked the accuracy of what I was saying to those. And then it kind of became a, a thing that we did 
Um, like it happened again. We did it again this year for history and geography a couple of times. Did we do it? Oh, a little bit for science. Yeah, and so my mom's like a really good study partner, but we should do it more often. Okay. <laughs> what is one thing you have learned from her that you would teach your own future children? Oh, work hard, play hard mindset. Uh, okay, so my mom, I think she does a pretty good job of embodying this and kind of leading by example and how she's a very hard worker. Like um, a lot of people don't really see what goes on behind the scenes, even for things like her Instagram, she works very hard. You know, anything that she's passionate about, her philanthropy work, she works very, very hard. But then also she, there's a time and place for everything and she knows that very well. And so whenever she's like out with her friends, she'll really let loose and she'll get it all out. And so then I feel like that also prepares her sort of um, for like the next time that she needs to work hard because you know, it gets out all of the stress. And so I've sort of picked up on that too. What do you think is her biggest sacrifice as a mother? Time. Career. Oh, you're a very busy woman, and so I do always appreciate that that you are that you constantly make time for us in the form of like really small things that add up. Like for example, studying together, or for example, bringing me to school on exam days, like waking up super early just to do it so that you can give me a pep talk and we can study like last minute in the car. It's really comforting to know that like, no matter how busy you are, you'll always like do your best to make time for us. And when I say career, because I live in Asia and I don't have family here, I feel so many people here rely on their family to help with the child rearing. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to outsource my children to other people to rear them. Perhaps also because my mom was a, a, career. You know, a career woman and I had little time with her. That makes me want to be as hands-on as I can be. Yeah. How do you feel about your mom's social media presence? Quite honestly, I'm just like used to it by this point. Like the biggest inconvenience that it probably brings to my life is just having to be her like photographer or sometimes her like Lightroom editor. Um, on a more positive note, my mom's social media presence is kind of intertwined with your being cool that I mentioned just now. Like, like as you've probably talked about on this podcast at some point, because of social media, like it's sort of you downloaded social media at first so because Hilton was on it. Hilton wanted to get on it, my sister. So you wanted to kind of see the scene, see what was going on. And um, in doing that, it's become like a, you know, you help us think of captions, you you know the trends better than we do sometimes because uh, you just, it's, it's kind of, it's made you very cool. And mm. so uh, on that note, your, my mom's social media presence, it makes me ecstatic. Whoa. <laughs> in, in defense of my social media presence, I have a TikTok account and it's there for positive affirmation, um, just silliness. Um, my Instagram, I it's, it's family, it's fashion, it's promoting causes and people I believe in, uh, which I think is incredibly important because if we have a voice and we can make somebody's day a little bit better, I think we should do that. And I, I enjoy it. Do you think this podcast is meaningful to students your age? Yes. yes. Personally, I recommend this podcast to a lot of my friends. Like I have a lot of friends who are obviously my age who are like, oh yeah, your mom's like a new podcast episode came out today. And I'm like, oh, it did? Like they know it better than me sometimes. And so like my friends are all your like really big fans. But I think like one uh, major reason for this is because you have such a wide range of professionals and therefore such a wide range of like stories and experiences that they're sharing and therefore sort of advice. And then obviously because like as youths, we are sort of looking for our direction and what we're going to do with our lives and our futures. Like having this podcast to expose us to all of these types of perspectives sort of broadens our thinking bandwidth sort mm -hmm. of um, because uh, obviously there's, there's probably like at least one experience that you're going to be able to relate to or be like, wow, that's so inspirational. And also because I think that because of how wide the range is, there's really something for everyone. I would say ditto. I think B did a really good job of answering that. Thank and you. I concur. I think I do get messages from uh, some of B's uh, classmates <laughs> and girls. Uh, and I think they do find takeaways from it. Yeah. So, yeah. What was your best holiday together? Milan. Milan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, December 2021. It was probably the most invigorating trip I've ever been on. And it was a mother-daughter trip. So it was just the two of us. Around that time, I think we discovered our love for walking tours. And uh, we were on them like three out of five days that we were there. Uh, we, we made a really lot of, a lot of really memorable memories. Uh, we saw like The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. We had really brilliant tour guides actually who answered a lot of our questions. And um, 
it was just overall quite a nice you know experience to bond because obviously forced proximity and like just the two of us and you know you kind of gotta work together or we you know we shared a room and so obviously you know i say forced proximity but it was nice Aww. proximity mm -hmm. and we had a lot of meaningful talks because it was just the two of us um over dinner especially and a walking tour in Milan is wonderful because then you can eat all the pasta you want. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, I did my 10K steps. I can do this. I can eat now. <laughs> yeah, it was great. We normally do, we like to do family uh, trips together, mm -hmm. but this was one where, because Hilton's in school and I think, I think we'd been to the US to see my parents and then Jim was still here. Anyway, we, so it was just the two of us in Milan and it was very special. It was. When B was little, what did you think she was going to be when she grew up? You know this one. Actress. <laughs> yeah, up until I was like 10 probably, I was like, I'm gonna be an actress. No one can stop me. This is my thing. I'm gonna be like famous. She wanted to move to LA. <laughs> it was a whole thing. Oh, it was my dad. My dad goes, B, you know, six million other girls had that exact dream. And I was like, oh, thanks for crushing it. But um, no, it was a good like, you know, reality check because in kind of realizing that and that prompting some amount of reflection, I was like, is this really what I want to do? Like, hmm, hmm. And uh, ultimately, that was not my cup of tea, but all the best to anyone who wants to be an actress. I don't think you should write it off. Maybe you could be an actress one day. You never know. And I don't think your dad was like trying to be a buzzkill. No, I think but... he, he's just honest that way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What is B's ambition now? Oh no, I don't know. Lawyer. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it changes like every week, but like I say lawyer when people ask because that sounds safe and like, I guess if all else fails, I wouldn't mind being one. The idea of law school doesn't exactly excite me. <laughs> so, I mean, we'll see, but it's you not- have time. Yeah, that's not an entirely wrong answer. One word people would describe Paige. Outgoing. Really? I, I was, most people I think would think Jim's wife. I was thinking Tai like, Socialite. No, but like, I hate it. One word that truly describes Paige. A lot of my friends, they're like, oh my gosh, your mom is so friendly. Like, she seems like very approachable. Like, if I saw her on the street, I'd be like, hey, that's B's mom. They all know you. Like, you're very outgoing in that way. Outgoing? <laughs> <laughs> Affectionate. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you are very outgoing. It's true. Um, but I said affectionate because um, as from a daughter's standpoint, I suppose, I get to see a more vulnerable side of you that isn't necessarily always shown to the world. And I think that side of you is quite um, affectionate and very loving Aww. and sweet. Oh, that's a good place that I can plug the fact that because we were talking about Instagram earlier. And I just want to say somebody said to me recently, you lead such a glamorous life. And I feel like on Instagram, like if you go to my feed, you see like the super glamorous right life. But then when you go to my story, you see me like first thing in the morning and it's not Exercising. glamorous. So I try to put both, I put the reality of my life and yeah, there are definitely glam moments, but uh, we, we tend to put pictures of ourselves where we look good on our feed, right? So yeah, just defending my glamorous <laughs> life. <laughs> Engage with Paige. As a little girl, I dreamed of becoming a ballerina. Fast forward two decades with a pirouette and a jeté, and I'm on the board of Singapore Ballet. One of my favorite dancers is Kwak Min Yi. She's a Singaporean who was named principal or lead dancer in 2020. In one role, she's as delicate as a petal in a classical tutu, and then in a contemporary piece, she's fierce, aggressive, and soaring through the sky. Once a month, Singapore Ballet offers an intimate in-studio performance called One at the Ballet, and tickets are only $20. Check out the website to learn more and hope to see you there. Paige, tell us, what was B's first words as a baby? Baba. Dada. Oh, okay. I didn't know. That makes sense. Did you want B to be a boy or a girl? Girl. girl. I like girls. My family has a saying, or we have a joke. My dad told my mom, uh, like right before she went to the hospital with to like ha birth me. <laughs> she, if you come back and it's somehow a son, I'm sending you both back to the hospital. <laughs> so like our family is very female daughters. Yeah, when I was pregnant with Hilton and they were gonna tell me that the, the sex, <laughs> your father was like, I don't wanna know. I was like, leave the room. I definitely wanna know. And I had convinced myself I was gonna have a son because I so wanted a daughter. Aww. I did not want to be disappointed. So I was like, Aww. I want a son, I want a son. I convinced myself. <laughs> and then um, the doctor said to me, Paige Jr. And I was like, oh my God, I was so 
ecstatic. And then I was so ecstatic with B. I don't know how to be the mom of a boy. Yeah, I cannot imagine you being a boy's mom. No way. <laughs> On a scale of 1 to 10, how bad did giving birth to B hurt? Oh, ten. Zero. What? No, but you were knocked out. I was knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was like, an emergency C section. What about mentally? Like I was, it was an emergency C. But you were knocked out. Didn't that hurt mentally at all? Like the stress and the literal last. Well, I mean, leading up it? to being knocked out. Yeah, exactly. But the birth That's what itself I was thinking was, about. So for context, <laughs> I was I took Hilton with me to see the ultrasound of B when it for was the a, first time. It was about a week before B's delivery date, and then there was no amniotic fluid. And the doctor said, um, ask Jim to take uh, Hilton. Hilton out of the room. And um, he said to me, there's- You need to have this baby right now. Yes, and I said, I haven't packed. And he said, too bad. <laughs> and so they immediately went into trying to get me to have contractions with medication because I wanted to have the birth uh, naturally. naturally. And uh, to make a long story short, B's heart rate went from da dum da dum da dum to da dum and then like just 16 people were in the room with me <laughs> and all of a sudden I was knocked out and I woke up and there was me. My mom says she should have known I'd grown up being dramatic because even my birth was dramatic. And drama since day one. <laughs> drama child B. <laughs> what made B cry the most when she was a baby? Everything. <laughs> oh, I was going to say like not having milk. <laughs> It's interesting, when I had my first child, she was very easy. And I would see other mothers having to deal with these difficult children. And I would pat myself on the back that like, I was such a good mom. And then I had the second child and she was drama, as we said from day one. And she did like, she would have a fit and she would cry and she would scream. And all of a sudden this mama who was like such a good mama realized that it's so much nature how they come out. And of course the nurture helps, but um, yeah, she cried quite a bit. Yeah. What made B laughed the most when she was a baby? Tickles. Oh, okay. So explanation for mine. I said peekaboo. We have this picture in the kitchen of my mom and dad playing peekaboo with me. You know the one right beside the sink. Mm. Yeah, and so I thought of that, and I was like, oh, well, I was smiling in that picture, so I assumed peekaboo. But mm. tickles makes sense. Yeah. Who was the first person Paige told when she was pregnant with B? Jim. Jim. Yeah, I mean, I figured it was either Jim or Mimi, our grandma. Have you ever dropped B as a baby? No. Yes. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> Do tell. <laughs> Actually, she, oh I didn't drop. Gosh. She fell. You, the first time you fell off the bed. Oh my god. You rolled off the bed. I yeah. corrected baby. <laughs> and yeah, I picked you up quickly. So uh -huh. <laughs> you're okay. Uh -huh. um, the second time you fell, you'd had swim lessons. You've been in the pool and then you fell off the, there was like a bench and then you fell onto the cement. Oh my gosh! And so then, and the face bleeds worse than anywhere. So then I took you to the doctor. I was just freaking out. The doctor was like, she's going to be absolutely fine. And everybody drops her kid. Don't worry about it. But yeah, I dropped you twice. Oh my. What is the first movie you both watched together? Frozen? Sesame Street? I don't know. <laughs> Wait, no, you weren't at Frozen. It was um, Hilton and I and the grandparents. You weren't there. You were out with Jim. <laughs> so parents listening, one of the things that like milestones you really have to write down because you don't remember. And I do. I was First very, movie. I was very digital, uh, diligent with Hilton on doing this. And I've been far less diligent with poor B. Woes so of a second child. Yes. <laughs> what was B most afraid of when she was a baby? Being dogs. dropped. <laughs> you were pretty scared of dogs when you were little. Oh yeah, I was. Yeah, it was one of the reasons I wanted to get a dog. Um, yeah, I guess Bella did. Bella is our dog. Bella helped me get over um, our fear. But I got it. We got her at like five. Was I scared of dogs up till five? Pretty scared. Oh wow, that's quite. Hmm. What is the worst part of being Bee's mom? Attitude. <laughs> Not getting enough time with her. Oh, that's so much nicer. I sometimes have 12 hour days at school, like six to like, I, okay, not 12 hours, but close to 12 hours of school. And so when I get home, I'm really tired and so I'm really grumpy and my mom has to put up with that. And so I said attitude. B has a royal attitude sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I, it's understandable, but I still don't like it. We often treat the people we love most the worst. We do. Sadly. What is the best part of being B's mom? Pride. 
When she's sweet, she's sweet. It's <clears throat> rare, but when she's this, when she's sweet, it's just the most joyful, wonderful Aww. feeling. I think I've seen you happiest, like when I accomplish something. Oh, that's a terrible mother. No, no, no. I mean, as a, I mean, it's a good thing. Oh, really? Like no one makes me feel as special as you do when I do something good. Oh. So I said pride. That's a mama's job. Yeah, but yeah. not every mama does it. Oh. What is your favorite thing that Paige does with you? Study with me. Take her to school. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No explanation needed. What is the one thing you love most about B? Her big heart. Oh, I was, I was going to use your words when she's sweet. She's very sweet. Mm. She's a very considerate kind person. She often thinks of others. She's the least self-centric person in our family. What high praise. <laughs> On a scale of 1 to 10, how happy are you with the way B grew up? 9.5. Nine the one thing that I don't like is that because we moved to Asia, which I'm very glad we did, she has missed out on knowing my parents and having you know the family that's in the U.S. So I feel that in that way, I have kind of stripped that from her by choosing to move to Asia. But I think we made the right decision. So that's why I said nine and not 10. Why'd you say 9.5? What's the 0.5 missing? Nothing's perfect. Yeah, that's true. What is your message for B? Say yes to life. <laughs> Be kinder. I also thought you might say work hard, play hard. She, I mean, she is a kind person and she is kind. It's just that I do think that there are times where she's just a solid teenager and it's absolutely normal. But parents don't like it, for sure. What is your message for your mom, Paige? 世上只有妈妈好. It's, you know the song? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a song in Chinese that goes 世上只有妈�ahao and basically, well actually it's, I believe it's 世上只有爸爸好. It's baba. Yeah, which basically means like in the world there's the only good person is my dad, but I changed it to the only good person is my mom. Aww. And um, I thought it, it's quite iconic in our family actually. Like we have a long history, my sister and I, of like performing it or singing it for our parents. And so I thought it was quite apt. And how? Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> That wraps another fascinating conversation to offer food for thought and a different perspective and hopefully inspire you to live life fully with passion. Hopefully you'll appreciate the tangible takeaways and meaningful stories. Please message me on Instagram at I am Paige Parker and let me know how we can do this better. As always, thank you for listening as together we pass the power.